All right, so we're gonna put the recording on here and we'll hit the broadcast. All right, welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our Stronger Together webinar. Um, my name is Tanya. I'm the VP of Member Services with the Fox Cities Chamber of Commerce, and we're happy to have you here. Today's uh, special guest speaker is Eric Thompson. We're happy to have him back. Eric is with Sandler Training, and he will be talking to us today about client retention by managing client expectations. So we understand this is a challenging time for the businesses in the community and staying engaged with their clients and being sure that they're retaining um, that level of business when we're not able to be together face to face. So we're excited to have Eric here with us today. Um, today's session will be recorded as always, and we welcome interaction throughout the session. If you have questions or any sort of comments or feedback that you wanna give throughout the event, please feel free to do so via the chat feature or Q&A, and we'll make sure to get those over to Eric. And we'll also have some time at the end. Uh, we anticipate the presentation itself will last about 30 to 40 minutes. And when we wrap up, we'll have time for Q&A at that time as well. So. With that being said, I will let Eric get started. Eric, thank you for being here. We appreciate having you back. I did a great job last week, so we're happy to see you again. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me back. Um, today, Tony asked me to talk about client retention by managing client expectations. And uh, thinking about that, um, a variety of ways we can take that with client retention. And uh, when we think about this session today, I'm going to introduce some ideas. I'm going to introduce some concepts, uh, make you aware of something, and uh, maybe give you a little bit of knowledge and, and ideas to make and, and make your own and go out and implement. If you have questions today, please uh, use the chat to make sure we do the best we can to answer them. Today, uh, three to four is uh, what our session was scheduled for, but like I said, we'll take some time at the end for questions. And uh, the one thing I would challenge you with is, and maybe we'll go around at the end and, and go through uh, any lessons learned or takeaways. But as you, you invest your time today, we, we appreciate your, your attendance and, and you being here. What can you use? What can you take away and implement right away? You know, we're, we're kind of in some crazy times with, with all the, the health concerns and everybody is, is in one of two mindsets, a, a, a crisis or a fire drill or survival mode. And those that are in an improvement and in, in getting ready to go back to the new normal, whenever it is. So, as we think about what we're about to embark on as we start our recovery process, whenever that may be in your world, I just want you to think about what are some client retention activities we might be able to do and implement right away from our discussion today. Same with training, uh, who we are, we work in the leadership management and sales arena. Uh, we do a lot of training with leaders, a lot of coaching with leaders, management owners, um, executives, entrepreneurs. We also work in the sales side uh, with sales uh, teams, developing sales processes uh, that they can replicate and uh, do debriefs and lesson learns and things from uh, Jim Cornelius and myself, Eric Thompson, uh, are from the Appleton and uh, Milwaukee Sandler offices. And uh, uh, we've got strategic partnerships with a variety of companies that when we get into uh, problems or, or we have uh, needs, we can go out and, and leverage those resources. When I think about client retention, I think about uh, some of the numbers that come up. You know, 32% of, of customers would stop doing business with a brand they loved after one bad experience. That's an interesting statistic. You know, a third of people would just stop as soon as they've had a bad experience. And when we think about companies and how much they do lose, um, it's, it's a considerable amount of dollars and cents on an annual basis. And with the, with the COVID and the crisis and whatnot, we've got to really be aware of what's happening and how we can retain our customers. 80% of, of your future profits are going to come from just 20% of your existing customers. Now, I know you're saying, wow, I've been devastated. Not all my customers might even still be here when we come out of this thing. But in a normal uh, environment, you know, the bulk of our profits come from a very small section of our client base. So we've got to make sure that we're doing the best we can to rally the wagon, so to speak, around who we have our as clients during these crazy times, as well as when we come out of this. 
65% of company and businesses come from existing customers. And if we think about existing customers, how is it that we incorporate this client journey and, and this client retention and how we're going to develop those relationships to move forward? So again, like I said, there are a ton of uh, client retention factors that go into uh, developing and maintaining those relationships and existing relationships to grow, expand, and continue to do work. But today, we wanted to really talk about managing those expectations, and, and I want to look at five different areas as, as we have uh, our time together today. Managing change, the communication and expectations, how we're going to communicate, uh, internal expectations, as well as client expectations, and the new journey, the new client journey. So let's jump right in. You know, managing change. This is a tough one. When I think about managing change, we are all undergoing changes, whether they are planned, unplanned. Uh, Tani and I were just joking about uh, being at home with kids, and, and I'll uh, pre-apologize if my four-year-old comes in and, and you see her go behind me, or she comes and puts her arm around me. She's learned that I'm on calls and working with clients, but yet she just with being only four, doesn't know how to handle the situation. And we're all dealing with those changes, whether directly or indirectly through other employees, other contacts, other relationships and friends. And as I think about how we work on, on managing change with clients, you know, we've got to understand that our clients are on this journey as well. You know, one of the things that we know is that really change is inevitable especially in today's environment. Heck, from the morning to night, we could have two different uh, uh, bits of information that allow us and, and require us to make adjustments and changes along the way. And, and really, if you think about with the speed that business flows, we used to be changes every two months, two weeks, two days. Now it could be every two hours. So as we think about how fast things are moving, we never know where our client is on this journey of dealing with change as well. Also, I, I did say earlier, when I'm talking to business leaders, I do find out that they are in a particular category or a bucket, let's say, the mindset of, of crisis and survival versus the mindset of opportunity and improvement. So we've got to self-identify and, and look inside of ourselves and figure out where are we on this path to change. Where is our mindset and our attitude as we approach change and client retention included? I love this graphic. We've got different zones. As we think about COVID and who we want to be during COVID, what zone do we fall in? What zone do you fall in? What zone does your customer fall in? And inside your customer, there's lots of other customers. So where do they fall? And it's different for everybody. It's different. Maybe I'm in the fear zone, but my boss or, or my spouse is in the growth zone. And maybe my customer is in the fear zone where I'm in that learning zone. So depending on where you're at, we have to be aware of what zone we're in as we continue to come out of uh, the COVID uh, era and the crisis that COVID has caused. And when I think about the phases of change, I think about people's journeys as everyone in, in um, dealing with this crisis goes through these phases of change. Somewhere on that journey, they're either in denial phase, resistance phase. They enter that neutral zone, start saying, hey, you know what? Now we need to start the recovery. We start to explore a little bit. And then we move from exploration into, okay, now we've figured out this new normal, even though it might always be moving we figured out this new normal and how are we going to move forward. So again, how do we deal with change ourselves and our customer? Now, as you look inside your customer, especially when it relates to retention, I think it, we have to identify and hold people safely. We've got to be able to connect to people where they're at on this journey. So if, uh, you know, you kind of see on that graphic, we've got a bit of an org chart. We don't know which level of this journey of, of the changes of uh, the emotions of change, we don't know which person is at which area on that path. 
I mean, the CEO could be still in denial phase. But yet the, the buyers and people that we work with one-on-one -on -one might be in the exploration or commitment. We need to meet people where they're at to hold them safely so that we can uh, continue to expand that relationship. And I think that's one of the keys. We've got to understand and be able to uh, help them to come out of these crazy times. It's a journey. It's not just a one and done. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to take some time to work through recover, recovery, because we're all dealing with different things uh, internally uh, in ourselves and in the companies. To give you an example of, of, you know, we go back to the simple which phase one of our uh, the coworker is in versus others. In one company that we work with, you know, most of the sales team got called back to work, except there were two or three people that they were still in this resistance phase. And the sales manager and owners deemed that they didn't want to bring those people back because they didn't want them to be a, a, a negative impact on the um, rest of the team. So they brought back the rest of the team who was mindset wise in the exploration and commitment phase. And those people could go ahead and start to reopen the business. And then later, they're going to be bringing back those other uh, workers as well. They had one on one discussions, one on one meetings with them people. So if we're thinking about retention, be uh, holding those people safely when we're working with different um, parts of the organization. We want to help them to lay the groundwork. We want to help them to uh, start their journey and lay that groundwork for success. Now, I also think that we've got to draw some clear lines. We've got to be able to help them put those pieces together. And if we're looking at identifying those champions, those stakeholders who are, are ready to move forward and understand them and to think with a clear mind, um, we need to identify them and, and use those champions internally to help our success working with those companies. And lastly, communicate. You know, that's uh, going to be a hot topic that, that we'll discuss here today is, is just communication. I can't say it, uh, um, I can't, uh, you know, point that out is, is that communication and expectations and getting that on the field uh, for how each of us are going to be interacting. The second is managing, the second uh, area is managing that communication. And when I think about managing communication with our customers, especially when it comes to client um, retention, we've got to focus on setting expectations. And when I think back and, and I think about when um, we've had poor relationships with clients, it's ultimately come down to this mystification. We're both not on the same page. So in Sandler, when, when we look at setting expectations, we're really focusing on adding some control and some predictability as to how we're interacting with our customers, prospects, clients, family, friends, but frankly, you can use up front contracts with all of them. So why do we want to make sure so that for us, it's that control, that consistency, uh, that competency and the concentration, but more so for our customers, I want to keep their relationship whole. So I want them to be clear of what we're going to be doing together. I want them to be able to understand and be able to open up and give us that information. So in Sandler, We've got a, a term called upfront contracts, and I believe upfront contracts are, are one of the keys for a good relationship, whether it's new relationships, client retention, setting the stage for future interactions. We've got to have strong upfront contracts. So what's an upfront contract? Well, first, uh, there's five different um, elements of a good upfront contract, and the first one is the purpose. You know, it's when we get together, what is it that we're going to be talking about? What is that uh, reason? You know, every contact with a client should be about specific purposes. Ideally, you know, that purpose should be about moving that relationship forward. In the sales process, it's about moving the sale forward. Next, how long are we getting together? What's the duration? Is it going to be 10 minutes, 20 minutes? Is it just a, do you have two minutes so I can ask you a couple of quick questions so I can get your order process? What is that length of time that you need to have a meeting for? You know, this should always be done uh, at the start of a, a meeting so that we, it'll then help us to define our agendas and our expectations. 
Because if you thought that you were going to call somebody and you were going to go through and, and have a rehashing out of, of customers' expectations, but they only had 10 minutes and you thought you had an hour, we've got a mismatch. And we, we want to make sure that we're okay and get that information out. Um, or if that's a mismatch, maybe we need to reschedule the call. Or we need to then uh, adjust what the expectations are and the roles. So uh, the buyer's role, the client's role, the prospect's role, whatever it might be, this is the third element. And when we look at defining uh, their expectations, we hope that they can be clear and specific so that they can share with us if, if this were going to be a good time together, what would they have accomplished? Because when we're together, if we're adding value, we're both providing information to this conversation. And ultimately, the fourth level or fourth element is your role. What is your role in this meeting? What is your agenda? What are your expectations uh, as we're um, having a conversation with our uh, client, prospect, coworker, upfront contracts? You can use that in all these levels. And at the end, the outcome especially now more than ever, if we're, we're figuring out how we're going to manage expectations. I think this upfront contract and specifically that outcome step is one of those um, tools that, that we can use to really be a game changer, I guess you could say, at how we're providing value to our customers. Upfront contracts should be conversational. should just be a one way. I'm, I'm just telling you information. We should be both ways. You know, I'm curious, uh, John, if, if we're going to have a, a, a relationship coming out of this virus with recovery, what would that look like? How would you want us to now interact? So, again, we can start to have those questions and bring those questions out. Upfront contracts, one communication piece about when I think about managing and setting those expectations, they can be used in multiple areas of, of business. We can use them on the phone. We can use them anytime we have a meeting. We can use them when we're discussing implementation. We can just uh, use them and set up front contracts to set up our, our next interaction. I think this is one of the biggest um, ways to leverage this communication piece. Most client relationships ultimately break down because of that lack of, of communication. For example, a client might not be able to reach you. They might have miscommunicated a, a key detail about something, a campaign maybe. And to resolve it, communication is needed. So I think we've got to make sure that we're having that good communication and uh, to manage our expectations. When we're having uh, conversations with, with our clients, some of these might be common sense, but you'd be surprised at how many people are multitasking now. Now that they're at home, now that they've got other responsibilities, they might be doing two or three things all at once. So first, give your attention. Whenever you're in a meeting with a client, we want to make sure that there's no distractions. For instance, when I'm on this call with you today, uh, there's a window where my home office is, and I shut the shade because I know I've got a tendency to look out the window and just kind of see the sun that's shining up there. So what distractions do you have <clears throat> that you need to close down and provide that attention for your customers? Listen. Well, we need to take time to listen. We don't want to binocularize those conversations. It's a conversation. It's not a, a dialogue. You know, right now, this is a, a fire hose of, of information. Uh, we've learned on some of these uh, sessions, we don't get a lot of discussion. But if we're dealing with setting expectations and managing expectations with clients, it has to be a two-way street. We have to have that conversation and ask questions so that we can hear how our prospects, clients, coworkers are interpreting uh, the information and responding. We've got to be mindful of, of how we're communicating. We've got to be mindful of, of the words that we use. We've got to be mindful of, of the tonalities and, and the, the pace and the, the uh, resonance that we're using. We've got to be mindful that we're trying to connect with our clients. We've got to be able to uh, be there for them so that uh, they know that we're holding them safely through this crisis and how we're now going to um, work together coming out of uh, the crisis. Follow-up. Obviously, follow-up is, is really 
critical, no matter what um, or how compelling uh, of the meeting it was, we probably are going to have some follow up uh, coming out of it. It's really important to remember, you know, maybe we need to follow up with an email. Maybe we need to send them some information. Maybe we need to remember, uh, review the action items that come out of that session. And lastly, inform, inspire. You know, communication is, is a form of, of information exchange, explaining and clarifying our thoughts. You know, these ideas are, are important, especially from a leadership role. You know, we should be leading these uh, conversations and, and interactions with our customers. And we want to make sure that we're challenging and adding value to those conversations. So when we think about having the, the communication and setting expectations, specifically around communication and client retention, what should we talk about? What should we get out on the table so that uh, we don't have any mutual mystification? I think about availability. We all have different times possibly that we're operating business hours. Is that understood so that if our client expects late night hours, you know, let's say you're in an IT world and your client now expects help desk at 9, 10 at night, but your business hours go till 8, we've got to make sure that we re-understand and rehash out those expectations on availability. How about response time? Same thing. Maybe you're working at night and an engineer sends some information uh, to you, but yet you may work early mornings you know, what is their expectation of that response time? We want to make sure our customers and, and us uh, get those things out on the table. Talk through the obstacles. What obstacles are going to come up uh, now that maybe we're running on, on a limited workforce? Maybe we're limiting um, the actual service that we can do. Are we giving clear timelines? You know, I, I've, I've fought this, but as I become older, I, I realize people don't mind waiting. They're waiting for what they want. So just give some clarity and give them some idea and keep communicating with them so that uh, we're both on the same page. I'm okay if uh, all of a sudden the delivery is going to be delayed as long as you let me know. So I'm not sitting out waiting for it and, and maybe not doing some other things. Which leads us to the last one, follow-up. Are we following up regularly with, with customers and making sure and, and taking uh, – things, how things are going so that we're sure that we're on that same page. <clears throat> and when I think about communication, I think one of the keys um, to communication really comes down to questioning strategies. Are we asking questions to get to the real truth? If you think about an iceberg, you know, they may share with us some of the tip of the icebergs, but there's a lot of data, a lot of problems, a lot of things below the surface that we hope that they will share with us. And if you're uh, struggling to really get to the real truth, I can't help but think the one of the holdbacks is that we need to ask better questions. Initial questions, follow-up questions. We might be able to uh, use third-party stories, metaphors, uh, brackets of some sort, or multiple choice questions, all to help uh, that prospect, client, coworker, uh, help us to set those expectations. Uh, moving forward. Third, I think we've got to think about uh, our ourselves. We've got to think about internally and managing our internal expectations. Client retention sometimes, uh, I, I believe, gets misstrewed a little bit in thinking that it's all about the customer. But I think, especially now more than ever, we need to step back and think about how are we now operating? You know, there was an as-was type outlook out there. Your team was set up this way. What will it be? So I, I urge you to take a step back and think about uh, how did you operate and how will you be operating, whether it's now on a, a maybe a limited um, uh, team or what will it be if maybe everybody stays virtual? How are we going to manage these internal expectations? Identify your team when we're thinking about who's going to work with customers and we've got a change or a shift in our internal team, who now is going to be the ones that will be interacting with our customers? You know, the chances are that, that you have at least several people on your team that are going to be implementing some of these solutions. We need to identify the new team members and, and make sure that they understand the, the roles that they're now going to play. 
we need they need to understand and, and be open about those expectations. You know, what are they going to be responsible for? We'll talk about that in a second. We've got to set clear goals. Maybe you have goals already set on uh, projects or solutions that you've sold. But now that we might have new players, we need to identify and reestablish some of those goals. We've got to take a uh, step back and, and refigure our plan. Because depending upon the client changes or our changes, we need to recreate a plan to implement each project, each sales, each solution, each service that we're going to be offering. Maybe it's now doing it virtually. Now maybe I can't send a team of people. I can only send one or two people in to complete a, a project. I love the RACI model. The RACI is a, a great um, tool that, that we use a lot with our clients. And it really helps our clients to identify uh, when we look at of a project or a solution and we figure out who on the team uh, is either responsible for that solution. You know, this is that team member that does the work to complete the task. You know, every task needs to have at least one responsible party. It's okay to assign a couple or a small team, but when we think about working with clients, who is responsible? What's the internal expectation that this person is working and servicing that client? Next, who's going to be accountable? This person, you know, they might delegate work, but they're the last one to review it. They're the last one to uh, look at that deliverable uh, before it's deemed complete, before it uh, ultimately is given to the customer. Who's going to be accountable for this project? Who's going to be consulted? When we think about consulted, you know, these are people that may not be working on the project directly, on the solution, but they're consulted and their input is needed. And lastly, who's going to be informed? Who needs to be informed of the progress? So this team member, they just simply might be need to, uh, need to be kept in the loop, so to speak, so that they uh, know where they're at with this particular uh, account. Next, after we identify who's uh, the players, who's the team members that are going to be working with this client, we need to make that uh, introduction. We need to make some time and uh, be able to build some comfort and rapport and have some communication and introduce the team. I think when we introduce the team, the new team maybe, or even the, the same team that's going back in, you might find that there's new people in that customer's uh, location that might be now responsible for some things as well. And this wasn't, this is just a one-off that I, I just thought of as we're um, talking here, but not only is RACI something that you could use for your internal team, but you may want to use RACI to figure out who's responsible, accountable, consulted and informed at your clients, given all the changes that may have happened. And that really leads us into managing that client's expectations. So it may be a well-endowed uh, conversation to take RACI into your client so that you can help manage their expectations, who you now need to go to as a point of contact, decision makers, cast of characters, and so on. We've got to understand what their expectations are so that it'll make it easier for us to fulfill their needs or their new needs, depending upon changes that they've made. I think one of the, the biggest mystifications that we have to manage is what do simple terms mean to each other? When I think about just success, we'll just use that one. You know, I'm curious, you know, what does success mean to you? If we took time to actually have that discussion, I can almost guarantee you out of 50 people, there's going to be probably 45 different responses to what does success mean to you? So what does it mean to our customer? We need to make sure we're managing those expectations. They may have an idea of what their expectations are, but we need to make sure that the reality is out there as well. You think perception is reality, and if we don't manage the customer's expectations and we don't be proactive in this management, the customer is going to set their own expectations for our products and services. So if you want to build a better relationship and retain customers, We've got to take time to have this very difficult conversation because when we set and help clients set expectations and let them share their expectations with us, 
we're going to discover that the road might not be as, as smooth as we once thought. We realize that we need to expect the hiccups. We need to expect adjustments. We need to remember uh, not just to set expectations, but we need to get those out on the table so that as we're having conversations, instead of a straight line of success, we're going to have all the adjustments. And in Sandler terms, when we look at the Sandler uh, sales process, we make sure that we identify some of these uh, these um, problems that might happen in a sale in our post-sale step. So as we're coming out of the crisis, we're getting back to the new normal. I would urge you to go back and talk about all these adjustments with our clients so that we can identify what all the hiccups might be in the road, so to speak. We need to make sure that we're discussing those obstacles before they come up. We want to take time to talk about those things so that we know how it is that they are going to deal with those particular obstacles. We want to be transparent. I, I want you to be reason, you know, set reasonable expectations uh, with your clients so that you know, companies can you know, help build um, their beliefs and trust in the solution together with you. I want to make sure that, that we're giving them clear timelines. And, and it may not necessarily be a timeline of completion if we don't know, but at least you know, customers don't mind waiting as long as we start to have that communication. So if we're giving clear timelines, it might be simply just an appointment for a call. We've got to be optimistic, but we need to be realistic. You know, we've got to think about most service for customers the timelines might be adjusted. We've got some clients whose customers, the timelines are pushed way out, but others have moved way up. Others have been a compressed timeline because all of a sudden there's nobody working at their building, so they want their build outs to happen right now. So we really need to be realistic about what's happening and how those timelines and expectations uh, will work together. Follow up to follow for perhaps the most direct critical element for managing expectations is just following up. I'll tie this back into RACI. Who's responsible for the follow up calls internally? Managing expectations, being responsible, accountable, and following up with our customer to make sure we're communicating. The fifth element I think that uh, is important when it comes to client retention. So many of us have now have a new normal, a new way that we're operating. And what we might find is there's a new client's journey. There's a new client journey that we didn't know might be this new journey. So what I would urge you is, is to take time to reflect, figure out how we're now working with our customers. And so that allows us to identify the new journey and set those expectations. It might be around delivery. It might be around service. I mean, you think about the, the landscape people, their service model has changed from three or four people going to a, uh, a maintenance project to just one person can go because of uh, the governor's orders. So we've got to identify what are some of those changes that we have to adapt to so that we can uh, start to recover and get back to work. So look at that client journey from delivery to service to development of new um, um, expansion of, of uh, new business, developing new products and services to offer them. And we don't know exactly what your journey is going to be, but you've got to work to identify that to help uh, craft those expectations with our, our customers. Otherwise, it's going to be mismatched and we're going to have problems. We've got to think about as we craft that new journey. We've got to think about, uh, we've got to work smarter, not harder, so to speak. We want to make sure that, that we're um, focused on, on a repeatable process. We want to focus on something that I can use as customer A, customer B, and customer C. I think one of the, the quotes that Sandler brings up is, there's no bad prospects, only poor salespeople. It's a Sandler rule. I love it. But I think it also comes back to client retention, because if we're not setting uh, that expectation of what this client journey is going to be, it comes back to the sales team's fault. The sales team, as well as the implementation team, 
because we're all part of that revenue generating team. And we've got to be both flexible in designing the customer's journey. We've got to understand that there are a lot of things out there that we may not know. There's a lot of things and unknowns that might be out there that we're going to have to go ahead and continue to adjust for. Um, we, we're not sure exactly how things are going to happen. We're accustomed to making decisions with those knowns, but it's important to be flexible enough to adjust. When we think about the client's journey, one of the, the number one uh, ways to, I believe, maintain and retain those relationships is about having client review meetings. I could ask a, a bunch of, of businesses about their client review meetings, and they tell me they do semi-annual, but they haven't done one for two years. I think right now, if we're trying to manage this new client journey, I think now more than ever, we need to go in for a recon meeting. We need to go and, and take that time and set up a, a virtual call, or, or if we are able to go see them, sit down with them and have a recon meeting. We have to have this consistent approach so that we can have these conversations that are meaningful, they're effective, and they get uh, various information out on the table so that we both can have a successful relationship. The first, a recon is an acronym. Uh, the first letter, the R, is to remember. We need to revisit and, and really relive the original reasons, the issues, the problems, the pains, uh, and objectives that led your customer to purchase and, and use you and your products and services. We really need to get them to remember why they started to work with you. Why did they choose you? Remind them of, of those previous experiences. And it doesn't necessarily uh, be that I have to, as a salesperson or, or a business owner, I need to ask you and tell you the reasons. It's, Tom, can you help remind me what were some of the original reasons that you decided to work with us? Because now it's their information. If it's their information, they're not going to fight with their data. So they'll use their words. I'm not putting words in their mouth. Uh, it's whatever they bring up is the reason they remembered working. The E in recon is evaluate. We need to evaluate the relationship. Ask for that honest feedback. What's worked? What hasn't? What do we need to do differently? You know, if you think about getting feedback from a partnership, they're willing to help you to improve your service. You know, focus on, on more on, on really finding the areas for improvement, not just positive feedback. Because I really want to focus on where we can improve our service for our clients. Might be a conversation around, hey, that's great. You know, we're doing a lot of uh, right stuff, but no one's perfect. If there was an area, that we could improve on, you know, what would that be? Well, what should we have done differently? That so we want to make sure that we're taking time to evaluate and we can then talk about the changes. What's changed? You know, our business and their business, both of them are changing so that we can uh, be there and service our clients. Have you taken time to figure out the changes in their business so that you can identify uh, what you need to then change to adapt to their world. What changes have they experienced from working with you? Any changes that could have led to a different impact? Any changes that they're going to be doing that you need to adjust your services? And lastly, I'm sorry, in the O is opportunities. You know, those changes help to open the door for opportunities for that client, for your business within that client's uh, relationship identify if there's additional areas that you can work together based on uh, what you've discussed. Ask for introductions in the company. Ask for introductions externally. I think opportunities isn't only about business with that prospect or sorry, with that client. It's about uh, those referrals and introductions to other um, areas that you would have success. The next steps. This is one of those areas that should be an easy one, but I think it's forgotten. I think next steps uh, is simply uh, one that people overlook because they figure we'll get it back together sometime. I would like to use the, the talk track of as we wrap up, should we get out our calendar 
so we can set up some more time, uh, maybe four months out. As we wrap up, maybe we should talk about some action items. Maybe we should set some more time up in our calendars so that we can get back together and reevaluate um, how businesses might be changing between now and the recovery. I think now more than ever, these recon meetings with our client relationships help us to, to manage those expectations so that we can adapt and we can have successful relationships with our customers. As we wrap up, I want you to think about some action items. You think about how you're working with your clients. What would you like to enhance? What would you like to eliminate? I think you should take a step back and, and really understand what phase of change might you be in? And I would add in whoever you are dealing with internally at your customers. Try to understand what phase of change they're in as well. We need to make sure we reestablish communication expectations. We want to make sure that they understand that we're there for them. We want to service our clients. Third, what changes uh, need to be made internally? When you think about your internal teams, what adjustments and, and changes need to happen, and how do we then uh, introduce those changes to our customers? Fourth, how will you understand expectations? And lastly, identify any new changes to that client's journey. As we think about those action items, I think that you can have some success. And as we look at uh, success in, in retaining and coming out of, uh, starting to recover and coming out of this crisis, I think now more than ever, we have to open up that line of communication with our clients so that we can um, continue to grow our relationships with them. You might have heard some things today that you have some questions on. You might have heard some things today that um, ultimately you think might help take your business to the next level. If you uh, have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, happy to get you more information on them. My email address is ethompson at sandler.com. And Jim and I are, are hosting additional sessions, um, free 30-minute uh, sessions to an hour sessions, depending upon uh, the topic. And we definitely would invite you and, and others in your companies and people that you know to join those as well. Those will be going out in, in some of the 411 um, publications from the chamber here. Uh, next week, I believe, we'll, we've got uh, a full uh, list for the, the rest of me. Open the floor for any questions. You can either uh, open the floor for discussion or uh, in the chat. i uh, love to uh, answer any questions and help you out uh, right now. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Eric. Um, I think all of that information is not only relevant, um, you know, in the world that we're living in today, but also as we move together uh, into the future. We understand that um, keeping um, in contact with our clients and retaining them is very important, uh, more important now than ever. So we appreciate your time today. Um, I hope everybody found that there was some useful information that they could take away and, and put into practice right away. Like you said, it's always nice to have tips that you can uh, implement right off the bat. Those are those are considered wins in my book. So we appreciate your time. Um, I don't see anything right now. Uh, I have a few things just to finish up on. If anybody does have questions, um, we're still here and we're able to take those. But um, as a reminder, uh, next week, we do have some additional events coming up. Um, on Tuesday, we're actually going to host our first um, virtual business connection. So for those of you who have been to a chamber business connection in the past, you know that those are uh, networking opportunities to um, just meet and greet with some of your peers uh, and discuss with them uh, your business, learn more about their business, maybe talk about uh, uh, some challenges and things that they may be facing at this time, but just a way to keep in contact with business owners in the community. So we're gonna be doing that virtually on Tuesday afternoon at 2 p.m. So we welcome you to register for that. Um, that is up on our event page. And then Thursday, we're offering a webinar um, in partnership with Hoffman um, Designing. Uh, and they are in, in Heart of the Valley. Um, we are going to be uh, listening to how do you get your workplace ready to bring your workforce back. So I think that'll be some relevant information as well. That'll be at 11 a.m. So all that information can be found on our chamber calendar at uh, foxcityschamber.com. We encourage you to go out there for more information. But again, Eric, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, very valuable information. Uh, we appreciate everything that you shared with us. Um, 
as a reminder, this will be recorded, or it has been recorded, and it is available out on our website. So please feel free to share with your peers. And if you have any questions, as Eric noted, his contact information is on the screen, and you're welcome to reach out to him at any time. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, sun shining this afternoon, so if you get a chance, get outside and enjoy that, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, guys. Appreciate everybody's uh, time this afternoon. Good selling. Thank you.